Hello everyone, how's it going? Doctor Incompetent here and let's play some Factorio, shall we? Continuing on with our complete beginner's guide and well look at our awesome factory going along here making plates, you know, got ore coming in, doing pretty well. But there's always more to do. So there's a few things I want to talk to you all about today with this episode and First of all, let's do assemblers. Let's get into assemblers, okay? We're going to talk about assemblers, and we're going to talk about problem solving and being creative and having fun with our new technologies. Because this entire uh, kind of smelting station that we have set up here could easily be improved with new technologies and new ideas, and that's the fun of this game. I'm going to show you many different options for things that you could do, and those aren't even going to be exhaustive um, because, you know, everybody's got a new and unique way of doing this. So let's go ahead and get over here, and I want to make sure that we can craft some assemblers, okay? So I can make 27 of them, which is pretty sweet. Uh, and I'm going to have to make some by hand to do this, okay? So this is going to require me just making a ton of circuits and wires and everything and doing it by hand and that's tedious but it's just early on so now i'm going to drag this assembler down to our hot bar on the bottom and one of the things with factorio that you always want to do um, that i'm bad at and i'm trying to get better at myself is improve upon your scale upgrade in your mind what you would like to do so if for example we're thinking okay i've got this these main bus lines coming along here and I'm going to go ahead and destroy this um, and destroy this so that now I can just visually see how many plates I've got going on if I have these main buses and buses are just way uh, terminology that uh, are used to describe s critical components going down your factory on belts and um, I mean they don't have to be belts, but just being moved along. Think of them as like key arteries. And I've got these arteries here, which are going to be plates of both kinds, okay? So we're gonna have plates coming along like this and plates coming along like this. So we're gonna have copper and we're gonna have um, iron plates together. Now I'm gonna put these like this and so i'm gonna have two main arteries or buses going down that have plates on them all right and i don't want this copper ore to go down the bus i'm gonna stop that eventually but for now this just gives us a visual i also don't want coal to go down the bus i don't want i don't need coal in many places so i'm gonna leave it here uh, this does inhibit our ability to scale our furnaces uh, moving left to right, but we can get into that in a moment. For now, just want to talk about moving some lines down. Now, you'll see if I keep going left to right, I'm going to run into this big rock pile. So I'm going to take this, and I need to craft some more belts, um, as you'll see. So I'm just going to, you know, make a ton. I'm going to take this, and we need to kind of make our bus move a little bit up this way so that we do not run into this deposit of ore. Uh, we will hit this forest, but we can uh, just chop it down. We are not much for environmentalism here. Now, what I want to do is build assemblers, and I want to use the plates that are coming from my main bus to make stuff so I don't have to make it by hand. So I'm going to put down an assembler, okay? So this is what an assembler looks like. It wants power. And when you click on an assembler, by the way, I got to that by pushing E to open up my character in inventory and crafting, and it's in the production tab. It's actually the picture of the production tab is an assembler, and it was right down here next to our laboratory. You can see it took plates, gears, and circuits to make, but I could make all of that by hand because I had the raw materials for gears and circuits, which are iron and copper plates respectively in my inventory so you can just build up now with 
a assembler, you can click it and you can give it a recipe exactly or much like the recipe list that we were just looking at that I can craft by hand, right? So think about this. Everything that I can make, my assembler can pretty much make or to a degree. You'll see. Now, what do I want to make? I like to start with intermediate products and get these babies going. I'm going to need so many gears and so many circuits. It's staggering. I also want red science so that I can just have my research going without me having to do the research by running around back and forth. So there's a lot of things that I want to make, but let's start with gears, okay? So once I select gears, because I have Alt, um, remember you can push Alt, left Alt, to turn on or off the picture of what's being produced at a facility, you can see a gear wheel there, okay? So when I now click on this, it's going to tell you um, what it needs to make the gear, and it just needs iron plates, and it'll make a gear. So I can just take plates off of this bus line and drop them into my assembler and I'm good to go and I will start being able to make gears. But one of the things that I had to get better at um, is you want to try to use, uh, avoid using inserters um, all the time and it makes it hard to scale if you do that and build your factory logistically. So like, for example, I could build, you know, um, a long handled uh, inserter right here and just grab with my long hand these plates and dump them in here and be good to go. But like I said, I want to avoid doing that um, because it's better, in fact, if I were to run a belt up and use that as much as possible to transport my goods so that I can scale up, and what I mean by scale, make more assemblers. So for example, I'm going to push Q to pipette and build another assembler right here. So what I'm doing is I'm gathering resources, I'm smelting, I'm making plates, and I'm moving it from right to left. Now you can organize your factory however you want. You can move it up and down. You can move it left to right. You can move it, you know, in a circle. You can do all kinds of awesome stuff. This is just how I did it in my Let's Play and how it makes the most sense to me um, because I don't have the best brain for this, so I have to do things that help me out. So um, I was building stuff going this way, and I just kind of went with it. Um, and that's how I do it, but this is... Again, this is a sandbox. This is about being creative. This is about doing whatever you want and figuring out best practices and workarounds and strategies that are unique to you um, and having fun. So a quick keyboard command you can get here is if I hold shift and I right click this assembler and then I shift left click this other assembler, I can copy the recipe, whatever I'm making here, I can copy it into another assembler. Um, so that's a nice shortcut. You don't have to do that. You can just click the assembler and then, um, you know, select the recipe. Now, if you ever want to change the recipe that you're making at an assembler, all you have to do is select this, these two gears next to whatever you're outputting. It says change recipe and you get back to this screen and you can start from scratch. All right. And you can say, no, I want to make gears. And then there you go. Now, what I'm going to do is use some new tech. I made some underground belts, and let's talk about these as well. I'm going to drag these babies down to our bar. Underground belts are a godsend because they allow you to overlap belts. All right. Now, why would I use that? Well, I'll show you in a moment because I'm going to also uh, use some splitters. So I'm going to talk to you about using splitters and underground belts to take items off of our bus so that we can keep moving plates on down, but make ourselves gears uh, right here without using a bunch of inserters. So the goal is going to be, and I have to wait to craft all of this stuff. It takes a while at the beginning of the game to hand craft everything, but once you start making it with assemblers, your life is going to get uh, much easier. So now I have a splitter. I'm going to take this and put it on my bar as well. Okay, so what does a splitter do? A splitter allows you to um, take items that are on a belt 
and split them as it says. Now, for example, what I can do is I can build a splitter right here, okay? And now, um, by the way, you can always build belts like on top of existing belts. You can change their direction doing that. You can put a splitter on top. You can put underground belts um, and stuff like that on top. You don't have to deconstruct it. You can just build it right on top. Now, when I select this splitter, it's going to say, um, it's going to talk about what's happening on the right and the left. And for the output, I'm going to say on the right side of this splitter, I'm going to filter it. And I say, I only want coming off of here, okay, to be copper ore. So I've selected copper ore. And um, by the way, I got to that in the intermediate product screen. You can see all the different stuff that we can uh, choose from. And now I'm selecting only copper ore to go on the right okay now it takes a second for this to queue up so you're going to have to pick up with f items that were split beforehand if you don't filter it's just going to evenly distribute what's on the belt it's going to take half of whatever passes through and put it through on the splitter and we're going to use that function in a moment but now what i'm doing okay is i am going to use the splitter okay so that um, you know, here, let me just, uh, here we go. I have now made my splitter so that it only sends copper plates through, okay? And it puts copper ore on the top. So now what I've done is I've basically created a way so that my bus doesn't have to deal with all of this copper ore. Now to clean it up, I still have to just stand here and manually pick everything up, which I'm doing right now. It's no big deal, okay? I'm just going to stand here holding F. It's going to feed it right to me. You're going to have to do cleanup like this, but here you go. Um, by the way, I just want to say that the input priority that I checked, you did not need to do that. You can leave it off. You don't have to mess with input priority at all. You can just go like this. But I will point out, um, if you go to tips and tricks, right, and you search this for splitter, okay, you can get... I didn't get this to pop up because I've built splitters before, but if you're new to it, this will pop up, and it will tell you everything about splitters and filters, okay, and how to... Um, what's going on when you want to split the items um, from one belt to a next. And in this example, they have different resources like stacked up in each lane, and then the splitter is like cleaning it up for them. Um, and so, you know, these are things that you can consider, but I always just come here and check out um, the, the tool tips and the tips and tricks from the top so that you can get more edification on how to use this. But anyway, you don't need to set the input priority at all. Um, you just need to change the output um, so that you filter, okay, one to the other. And now I'm actually going to be a little bit uh, silly and just build a bunch of belts that uh, will take this copper and just kind of dump it back on here. So I have, if I ever have any extra copper, it'll just back up here and then eventually, you know, um, it'll get to a point where it holds. You don't need to do this at all. Um, it's just, I like being silly with my spaghetti. Now, um, it's time to talk about using a splitter to just split by dividing the output uh, or the throughput on a belt by two. So I'm going to use a splitter, okay? And I'm going to do this in a way where... I'm going to split along the bottom. Okay, I'm going to push R to rotate this around. And I'm just going to take... Um, how do I want to do this? I'm actually going to do it like this. Okay, so this is fun to think about. I'm going to build a splitter, okay? And it's going to go right here. And it's going to seem strange because now, uh-oh, look what happens. This is a way for me to, like, merge my stuff. But I actually don't want to do that. So I'm going to stop the belt right here. And I'm just going to pick up these belts uh, so I can clean up my workspace a little bit. And I'm going to stand here and just kind of collect all these copper plates. I don't want copper. What I'm doing, though, is I'm demonstrating I'm going to... Um, 
run plates, iron plates like this, right up, okay? So that with inserters, I can feed my assemblers iron plates from this line and I split it. But you see that this splitter got in the way of my copper belt line. Well, this is where underground belts come in handy. I can put an underground belt here, okay? Um, and you always want the belt facing the belt and the kind of curved dome side to, to indicate like where you're going underground. And then when you click one, you start to drag it over to the left and you'll see that there is a yellow dashed line with an arrow, okay? And you can't, you can only build this for, um, I believe these are, yeah, these are four tiles with the basic underground belt. But now, um, and you can push R if you wanna change the direction of it, um, but I wanna go like this. And now you can see that as I'm building my buses, keeping them going down, I now have my copper line still here, but it just took a pause for a moment to allow for this splitter to send iron plates up to my assemblers so I can make gears, okay? Now we need power up here, so I'm just gonna kind of grab some power um, and bring it here, and you'll see that now, boom, boom, boom. Here we go. These are working. These are starting to go, but now they've stopped because they have no place to put their items. So you pull with an inserter items into an assembler, and then you need to use an inserter to take them out again. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just, for the time being, have a line that goes up here, and we're gonna just build some inserters that will take these away to build another power line like this and now we are getting gears and for the time being just to have these in a handy spot for myself all i need to do if i want uh, i'm going to run this up is place an inserter like so and put a nice box like so and get some power over here like this and now I'm going to get a box full of gears. Now this doesn't look like much, but this is the start of stockpiling items so that I can make better stuff. Now, whenever I put things in a box like this, there's only two reasons to do it. Number one, it's a stopgap. If I don't need this for anything right now, I'm just storing it. And number two, I still like to have a little bit of a reserve of items like this lying around so that if I ever want them, I can just go pick them up. Now remember, you can push M to show the map. You can zoom in on the map, and you'll see like, hey, I'm making gears right here in these assemblers. Here's where I'm making my plates. And I know that I've always stored a little bit of gears wherever I'm making gears, okay? So I'm making a dedicated area to create gears. Now, I, I keep saying scaling. I keep talking to you about scaling. I'm gonna pick up a bunch of gears, by the way, because I wanna make some belts. And so it's really easy to make belts if I have gears in my inventory and don't have to go through the step of using plates to make gears, right? So scaling means like if I want to increase the amount that I'm making, I can do so by simply pushing control C to open up the copy. And I say, hey, I really like having this assembler right here. I'm just gonna copy the power pole and um, the inserters and I'm going to build it another one right here and I've ghosted in the outline I just have to push Q on my ghosts and um here, here, here. oh I don't have any inserters made that's why it's beeping at me let's go ahead and make some and I can build this right away characters in the way I got in the way okay and if you copy the blueprint it does copy the recipe you see and we'll go ahead and copy the power pole like that and once we get this built, we're good, except for the electricity. Uh, one of the things you'll find, at least I find early in this game, is that uh, it is rough to get enough power because the radius of the power poles is pretty small, but soon enough, you'll get bigger ways to distribute power. So now I have three assemblers building me some gears, and I've got gears here. All right, so remember another beautiful thing is once this backs up, 
these will all stop and stop consuming resources. And then once I take these, it'll fill it back up again and it just makes things on demand. Now notice that my we have some problems though with my output of plates. I don't have enough plates because I don't have enough ore. So we have all sorts of issues with ore. And why is that? Because we've probably mined away um, most of the resources that are right here. The, the iron has been, there's no mineable resources, no mineable resources, and this has a little bit left. So we need to create better iron drills, and let's do that with electric drills. Let's graduate and move on, and I'm going to make uh, 15 iron drills. Because as you'll see in this game, what happens is you start using plates to make something like gears, then plates need iron, so you need to up your iron. Then you say, okay, I've got enough iron ore, but I'm actually not making enough plates. I need to make more furnaces so that I can make more plates. And then you say everything's good. Now I can go expand my factory and make new stuff. And you just kind of keep balancing out, keep trying to make sure you're producing enough resources from the beginning of the chain all the way through your factory. Okay? So this is the fun of splitters, underground belts, assemblers, okay? Now that we've built many of these electric drills, let's go ahead and expand our horizons, all right? And it's gonna say, I want way more iron. But you know what I don't need? Coal. So beautifully, I'm gonna ignore the coal and I'm gonna build this right here We've got 6.6K. Let's start on the outside. I like to just deplete my nodes from the outside in. Here's three. Seven. Eight. How many left do I have? Eight? That's pretty good. I'm going to build a ton of these. And you're going to maybe be surprised, but you just can't have enough. Okay, so, well, one, two, three, four, five, thirteen. Okay. Um, why did I put these spaced out? No, no, no. Let me, uh, let me, let me get these spaced a little tighter. There we go. Fourteen, okay, of these electric mining drills might seem excessive. It's really not. Um, one of the things that you understand about this game as you play it and I, I'll keep stressing it you know is just like you can just never never think big enough at least I can so use as much as you want and it still won't be enough right now it might be overkill but you'll need this at some point and remember if you build your factory um the way that, you know, similar... Oop. Actually, I'll explain that in a moment. If you build your factory the way that I'm building mine, um, or in a similar fashion, you only make stuff to demand, and eventually you'll stop once your boxes and your line fills up. Now, I'll explain this. So I had this line going like this, and I went to build this, and I was just dragging across... And once you get underground belts, okay, and you drag across, the game will automatically insert underground belts if you have them built, okay? If you don't, it won't do this. But if you do, and, and they're in your inventory, it'll do this for you. Now, actually, in this situation, though, I don't want to do that. I want um, the belts to work like this so that they are... Um, these will put... Uh, iron on the outside, this will put iron on the inside, and this will put iron on the inside. So we'll have, you know, all kinds of iron coming in uh, on both sides of the belt. And then now, all I'm going to do is I am going to take this, all right, and we're just going to kind of curl it, and we'll do the technique that I just described, uh, where I'm going to go ahead and run this across, and now we can go under our coal belt and not worry about it. All right, so 
this is fantastic and it'll help us out a ton. All right. So, we need to get power down here. Let's do it. One. Two. Three. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Now, actually, because I built these so tightly together, with my current power pole set up, you'll notice that um, I cannot get power to these interior drills. Now, that's frustrating. Um, and one solution would be to just remove some, okay? You could certainly do that. But if you want to play around a little bit with the belts that we've already got, all right, um, I could easily... Do something to the effect of that, okay, and just run this underground, and then put a power pole here, and then uh, I can reach this one like that, and we're good. All right, so now I have just a staggering amount of drills, but what about this? Let's look. Okay, remember, whenever you build stuff, you always got to go back and check on your production. See, okay, how am I doing? And luckily, I'm doing great. We still produce plenty of electricity for this. And now, our plate deficiency is about to be uh, taken care of. And you'll notice um, we have a problem that we need to fix. So sometimes when I see this, okay, the iron ore on the top of the belt, I had forgotten that I was sending iron on the top lane of this belt. It wasn't coming through before because I wasn't producing ore fast enough for this to be a problem, but now I am. Um, and that's a good thing, but we need to address this. I don't want iron ore on my belt at all. It's confusing and I don't want to gum up the works so i'm just going to stand here and hold f and you'll have to do this do some cleanup sometimes All right so now we're going to do the exact same thing that we did here we're just going to split this off to filter okay um and so i'm going to put a splitter right here for now this is fine and we'll just say hey on the left side of this can you make it so only iron ore comes out and then we'll run this around like this. And there we go. And I'm going to just do the exact same thing for uh, the sake of hilarity. Get rid of this. And dump it back on. Infinite belt. And then all we need to do is stay in here. Just pick this stuff up off until the ore is gone. And then we've got Magnificent, okay? Clean bus, plates coming out, okay? And we can start making gears again with real aplomb um, because we have b uh, plates coming out. But you can see that even though we have plates coming out, it's still not as strong as it could be so now i want to talk to you about upping our iron plate game we'll have to up our copper plate game as we build assemblers to handle um circuits and wire okay um but for now let's focus on the fact that we are you know maybe not making as much as we'd like one way to really get your bus going, okay? And you don't have to do this at first. Like, you can always just prioritize what you want, of course. Um, and, you know, get red science up faster so you can do more research. But for now, I'm okay with saying, all right, I've got five furnaces going here. And they're doing their thing. 
and what they're doing is fine. But in all honesty, um, I need more furnaces. This isn't enough. We have, look how much ore we have. So what we can do, okay, is continue our game of furnaces and just run this coal bus down and continue producing plates and add them to our bus, okay? So I'm going to do that. I'm going to go ahead and make some more. And oh, we, we're out of furnaces. So all we need to do is make some furnaces. Furnaces just take stone. Well, guess what? We set this up a long time ago, which was stone. And there's a lot of stone here. I don't want to just control pick this up because I don't want that much stone. But I do want, um, you know, a bunch more furnaces. Now, one thing I can do, okay, if I wanted to, is simply keep things going as it, it as they are, all right? Like, I could say, okay, we're doing great. Let me go pick up some. How many gears do I have? None. I'm going to go just grab uh, these gears, and then this way I can go ahead and make a bunch of uh, conveyors, okay? Now, actually, I don't want to make that many. <laughs> I shift clicked. Shift click. Uh, oops. All right, let me calm down here. Shift left click makes too many. I'll make a few. There we go. Eventually, though, you see how I'm like um, making belts and things by hand. Eventually, even that, you're going to automate belts. You, c I mean, everything everything you want to automate it that was something i had to get my head around too when i first started playing i was like well even like the basic stuff yes i mean everything that you can all right go for it now um, i'm going to start pipetting this and what we're going to do is we could just replicate the process we could be like all right i like what we've got going here i'll just continue it so um one now i'm actually not going to build it here these power lines are uh, annoying me they're in the way I'm going to build it. Uh, hmm. How do I want to do this? No, this is fine. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay. And we have existing one, two, three, four, five, six. That's 12. That is good. I like 12 on one lane and 12 on another um now i'm gonna go ahead and take my coal and i'm gonna run it and you'll notice we just use our underground belt to dance around and we pull this like this and then we say all right let's go and we need a power pole here and a power pole there now, we just need to give this iron ore. Well, guess what? Instead of dumping this iron ore back, what if I just take iron ore and put it here? Now, that's something I could do. Okay? Now, we're going to get into the problem solving. Something I can do is just continue as I am. And I could take this splitter and just provide iron ore right down the line to these furnaces. I could do that. But see how nice and dense this is right here? So what if I change things up? What if what I did right here was I built another line okay again there's so many ways to do this i'm just going to do it this way okay so what if i built another line that came along the bottom 
Oh, I'm out of uh, underground. All right, let's make some more of these. Like that. Okay. I'm actually going to get rid of that power line. I don't need it anymore. Uh, and I want to make sure that I can do what I want to do. Here we go. Okay, so what am I doing? I'm creating a line right here. Right? And I'm going to alter... how I'm sending plates. I'm going to take this splitter out and I'm going to stop the operation for a moment. Okay? And instead of... I'm going to start building some long-handed inserters and I'm going to put them down here. Instead of taking the iron plates out and putting them on the same belt as my iron ore, what if I took away every belt, every inserter that was sending, okay, and replaced it like this. Now, I can go ahead and take all these. I'm just holding F to take all the plates off this line. Get it free of plates. Okay. And I'm going to alter the landscape by saying, I want you to just send iron ore down the line. And I want you, okay, to send... plates down the line and I'm going to take away that one conveyor so that instead of dropping all the iron ore onto only one lane I have now filled this entire conveyor with iron ore and I'm going to be talking to you about this solution which is basically using both lanes to increase throughput so you'll notice that when I am sending a single lane of iron plates up and I split it, I'm taking that down by half to send them up here to gear land. And that is slowing my throughput. But what if instead I had two lanes and I split it? This would allow me to produce way more up here and hopefully keep more plates going through. Okay. So this is going to be our new game plan. And I'm going to take this out. We don't even need to use the underground belt here anymore. All right, because we're going to be running coal all the way. And now... We can say, I want you... to start giving me the goods. There's the goods. I'm going to be, uh, I want to be consistent with this on the right. Yep. And we're going to need some power poles because you know, you generally do, uh, less than ideal. to get power to that. Uh, I will have to do this just for one power pole, unfortunately, with my setup, but that's okay. And let's go. I need some more inserters like this. Sure. I need some more regular inserters when I'm on it. Okay. So now you need... Oh, you're not... Well, yeah, that's a problem. Um, 
Mm. Yeah, the way that it's um, structured, unfortunately, it just doesn't... It doesn't work. Yeah, I'll have to do it like that. I put I put it on the wrong belt, basically. There. No, that doesn't work either, though. That's hilarious. Okay. Here we go. Here we go. That is fun. Now it works. Okay. And you need power. Okay. Let me get this down here and this down here. And we're going to have to do the same thing. Alright, so what we have now, okay, as we've done a little bit of fun reinvention, is I've begun to split apart my factories, and now I have all of these putting iron plates on this lane right here, and this is kind of like my iron plate station. And so now all I have to do is just pull this up, and um, we're going to just get rid of this. Like that. And this is pretty good. But I'm actually going to... I'm going to uh, move this up, actually, because I want to leave room for copper. If I want to extend my copper. There we go. Now here come the plates. And here come the gears. We've got a ton of gears. We're doing great on gears. Alright. So now. We've got iron plates coming along the bottom. Things are looking smooth. Oh, you need an inserter to give you coal. There you go. Now I've got all this space right here. Where I could build more furnaces. If I wanted. Um... So, you know, it's not a bad idea. Good. It's actually better to build it this way just because of the power situation. So this way we guarantee that they have power. And we just go ahead and say, hey, hey. Hey, hey. There you go. More plates. Now, problem is putting so many plates on one side of this that, you know, we're backing up. But that's good. So, at this point, I'm happy with my change. We've started to use long-handed inserters, okay, to redo and reimagine one aspect of our factory. Now, I really didn't talk about this too much, but let me explain long-handed inserters to you. They grab and pull from one square further away than our standard yellow inserters, but when you are pulling from an assembler or a furnace like this, you may pull from the first or the second tile. You notice that, you know, these buildings take up two tiles. So, this pulls from either one, okay, as long as it's touching, and then it deposits two away. So, you know, you can dump things with long-handed inserters into the back or the front and pull from the back or the front. Uh, so you have a little bit of wiggle room because this is a two-by-two. Two. And then we're going to dump them out with this. So this is a way for us to start using separate belts. It's only possible, okay, oh god, Look at this disaster. It's only possible if you um, have both 
the long-handed inserters and the inserters, which is the first technology we got from researching there. And I'm just kind of showing you, you know, what's possible. But this isn't the only way to do it. There's many ways to do it. And you'll notice, too, that we're only putting it on one lane. And that's a problem. But what if, okay, I said, you know what? I like what I'm doing. But I wish I had some going on the top lane, okay? So I had a full, here we go, plate workshop that this belt had plates on both sides. Now, one thing you can do is you can use a splitter, okay? So you could just put a splitter like this and then give it no designation and then just curl the splitter to dump plates on the other lane of the belt and now I have a belt that has is full of both plates on both sides okay so you can do this right but watch some of what happens okay so first of all you'll notice that when I split here now it's putting iron plates on both lanes so you have to be really careful when you do this because you want to make sure that, okay, you're okay with the fact that both lanes are being taken up by plates. The other thing about this is it's kind of cheating. You're not doubling your output. You're simply taking from one side and distributing it on both sides. So yes, it looks good, but it's not as much, um, it's not as many plates as if, as if I were to legitimately produce them independently and dump them onto the top lane. So right now it looks good, but if we want more, we can just grab this, for example, and say, hey, you know, I want this plate to go someplace else. Um, or I'm sorry, I want to put plates on the top. So let's do that. I've got the, the ore right here. I got a ton of ore coming in. It's looking good. Actually, I'm getting a little patchy um, on some of my ore. Right? And you'll notice it's because all of these are putting on to the top lane and only these five are putting on the bottom. So I have an uneven distribution. Also, you can tell by the way, the green light means I'm working. The yellow light means I'm stalled. All right. So another thing I could do if I wanted was to take advantage of the fact that I have this bus right here of or this line right going down with all the ore and I can build some furnaces, okay, that will use long-handed inserters to grab iron ore and put them in here, okay? And then I can say, you know what I want is I want to drop like this, okay? But I need coal. I need power down here, all right? So I could simply split off this lane or I could curl this belt back around. And I think for now, the easiest thing might be to do this and split off the coal that I'm sending over to my power plant and just make a another Okay. Here. Line like this. All right. And start grabbing. Like that. And boom. Now, if you'll see, these inserters, remember inserters always put on the opposite lane, are going to just take and they're going to make plates and put them on the top so i'm going to get rid of this splitter so that i can show you how now we have legitimate production of iron plates going on the top now i'm doing by the way right now this is like insane overkill of the amount of plates that i need for now but it's not for later okay and so this is 
there's nothing wrong with setting this up because this can be something that um, I actually will need as I scale up my factory and the demand on plates increases. I have to switch places here uh, so that these take advantage of the underground belts properly. And we go like this and we say here and we say here. We say here. And well, we need power. So again, we have power issues and I can't quite reach them. So what are we going to do? Well, I think honestly, in this case, um, the easiest thing to do is actually just uh, take a moment to space this out and put some power in. And let's go ahead and get some inserters going. Okay. And then we say, hey, I need ore. And then, hey, there we go. All right. So this, like I told you, there's multiple ways that you can solve these problems and you can do whatever you want. I just showed you one way to reimagine the factory to incredibly boost your iron plate production by using long-handed inserters and both sides of the belt. Now, you'll notice though, I only have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight furnaces here. So the distribution of plates on the top lane is less than on the other side because there are more putting it there. And so you can balance this out as you see fit and get an equilibrium where you have an equal amount going and you are rocking and rolling. And now visually, what I always like to do is just look, are there any backups? And right now it looks like, you know what? I got double copper, I got double iron, I got double coal. I'm working on double iron plates to ensure that everything in my factory is running smoothly. Okay, one, two, like this and there there's actually power coming in right here um so i can almost use that we can just say hey can i have that and then oh got to rearrange this for the power pole and you start to see the symphony begin as you get all of your factory moving all right everybody so we talked about assemblers we boosted our iron production and we are transforming our buses we talked about underground belts and long-handed inserters and we're going to start continuing to automate the production of more intermediate products and even logistical and production items as well so that we can start doing more research and expanding our factory. Everyone, thank you so much for watching. I hope you're still finding this guide to be fun and informative. And remember, I'll say this so many times, this is just one way to do things. It's not the only way to do things. All I'm trying to do you is show the fundamentals so that you can have fun in this sandbox factory game. Take care.